Hit what? Okay. Is this work? You will get me? All right. All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We welcome the Reverend Dr. David B. Reynolds as our guest minister today. Dr. Reynolds is a senior clinical staff of Pastoral Counseling Services in Manchester, New Hampshire, where he has worked for 35 years. As a licensed pastoral psychotherapist, he provides psychotherapy to individuals, couples, and families, offers spiritual direction, and serves as a consultant to churches. He is an ordained minister in the Christian Church, Disciples of Christ, an ecumenical partner with the United Church of Christ. He is married to the Reverend Carol Meredith and lives in Deerfield, New Hampshire. For leisure, Dr. Reynolds enjoys jazz, mysteries, travel, and beach walks with his wife in Yorkshire Terrier. And he's gonna give us a brief introduction also. Uh, thank you, Laura. Thanks for that uh, introduction and welcome. It's so good to be with all of you today. It's good to be back. I've been here several times in the past, so good sign that people came back even though I'm here again, so that, I appreciate that a lot. Uh, we're uh, in the church here. We're in the season of Pentecost. It's the season of the Holy Spirit. Green is the uh, color. And uh, we, as you know, we're also in the season of, of autumn. Uh, wonderful season in New Hampshire. Just love it uh, here. Maybe we're just a little past peak, but it's still very beautiful all the way around. So we're thankful for God's creation. So as we gather in the season of Pentecost and the season of autumn, we're going to be listening together to two scriptures. One is uh, Psalm 15 and the other one is Matthew 21. And it's a uh, teaching story, it's a haunting story about uh, a woman who comes to Jesus for healing for her daughter. And I think the story gives us some really great ways of looking at the healing journey that we all are on, but it happens to focus on the, the woman and the daughter, but especially Jesus. I think he learns from this experience. So I invite you to open your minds and your hearts, and uh, we will consider together the, the scriptures that we will be hearing in just a moment.
Good morning. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship responsibly. Each morning, God's grace awakens us. Each evening, God's peace cradles us. Compassion is our companion as we go through work and day. In every moment, God is present with us. God whispers words which can change our lives. Justice is our faithful teacher, pointing to where we should make our prayers. When we find ourselves groping in the shadows, God's light will provide the way home. <clears throat> in our home, in hope we, we return home and find a peace. Prepare. Please join me in the gathering prayer in unison. Holy and awesome God, some sounds is found in integrity and living truth, not in the assertion of power over others. Open our imaginations, imaginations of your love and heal us for all that serves us from you and ours, that we may hope and vision and Amen. Please stand if you can and join us in our first hymn, God of Grace and God of Glory. to worship is acknowledging to God and to each other what we have left undone and what we have done, what separates us from God and each other and ourselves sometimes. 
So I invite you to join me in the prayer of confession. Um, right? Okay. Uh, let us be God's people in prayer. God of love and justice, we long for your peace within and without. We long for serenity in the midst of struggle. We long for the day when our homes will be the dwelling place for your love. Yet we confess that we are often anxious. We do not trust each other. We harbor violence. We are not willing yet to take the risks and make the hard choices that love requires. Look upon us with your kindness and grace. Show us how to walk in your paths through the mercy of our Savior. Amen. We will have a moment of silence for your own private prayer. Amen. My siblings in Christ, hear the good news of Christ, that if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Our uh, souls, our lives have been made whole through the love that God has shown us in Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, the passing of the peace. I'm learning French, so I get a chance to practice a little bit. I do not know Spanish as well, but I'll read it. And I'll ask for your indulgence on both. La paix du Christ soit avec vous. Uh, la paz de Dios se contigo. May the peace of Christ be with you. Can you greet each other in peace? Peace be with you. Peace to everyone. So we come to the time of the children's story for the children that would like to come forward. If you wanted it. Oh, yes. Probably this would be better. Either way. And I asked Laura to come and help me with this. Thank you. One of the things with that language is you can't hold it. Oh, of course. Emily has said that, so I forgot. Uh, thank you for uh, coming to assist us today. So um, we're going to re reenact the uh, gospel story about Jesus. So, Laura, if you would come up. Do you, do you mind standing up here with, with, with us? Okay. Okay. So in this story, um, there's a mom that uh, asks for, sorry, asks for healing for her daughter. So I'd like you to just say that and ask for healing for your daughter. Well, I have my daughter, Abby, here. Um, maybe I'm the grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, she's been very sick, and I would really, really like your help in healing her. And uh, Jesus' first response is this. No, absolutely going to do it. Oh, no. And uh, the next part of the story is where... Um, the disciples say to Jesus, um, send her away, she's bothering us. So could the whole congregation, could you just say that? Send her away, she's bothering us. You are good. You're, you're ready for Hollywood. Okay? Good. And Jesus says, I've only been sent to the lost children of Israel, his own people. Um, and... Um, then um, the, the next stage of the story is the mom comes 
in front of Jesus, so, and uh, says, uh, we'll, we'll summarize, the Lord help me. The Lord help me. So the, the mom gets right in, in a sense, in Jesus' face. Um, and Jesus says a, a rather shocking thing. Uh, it's not good to give what is holy to the dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa, he's right. So, and then the mom, and, you know, it's not going to take no for an answer. You know, the mom says, yes, but even the dogs eat the crumbs from the master's table. So if you could say that or close to that. Oh, yes, but even the dogs eat the crumbs from the master's table. And Jesus learns and is amazed. And he says, uh, what amazing, essentially, what amazing faith you have. Uh, go in peace, your daughter is healed. Oh, that's You're good. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks to Laura and to Abby. <laughs> and to you, you, you all did quite well on your response, too. Okay, we now come to the time of uh, scripture reading and listening, and uh, we all listen to scripture equally. Um, uh, you, me, folks online. So I invite you to uh, take a moment and take a deep breath and just uh, prepare your heart and your mind and your body to receive the Holy Scripture. The lesson from the Hebrew scriptures comes from Psalm 15. O Lord, who may abide in your tent? Who may dwell on your holy hill? Those who walk blamelessly and do what is right and speak the truth from their heart, who do, who do not slander their... Uh, do, who do not slander with their tongue and do no evil to their friends, nor take up a reproach against their neighbors, in whose eyes the wicked are despised, but who honor those who fear the Lord, who stand by their oath even to their hurt, who do not lend money at interest, who do not take a bribe against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be moved. Our gospel lesson comes from the gospel of uh, St. Matthew, uh, chapter 15, verses 21 to 28. Uh, it's important to remember the context of this because just immediately Jesus has been wrangling is that a New England word? Wrangling um, in conflict with the religious leaders of his day. And he has uh, confronted them on the purity culture that they promote. In fact, they had just argued with Jesus about, you know, you have to wash your hands right, you can't take certain things in. And Jesus said, it's not what goes into a person that makes them undefiled, but it's what comes out of them because it's what's within the heart that uh, makes one um, right or not right before God. So there's been this conflict going on, and then comes the story of Jesus and the Canaanite woman. Um, Jesus was a Jew, as you know, and uh, the Canaanite woman was a Gentile, meaning that she was not a Jew. So Jesus had gone outside of the environs of the Jewish uh, people, and he encounters this woman. Jesus left that place where he wrangled with the Pharisees. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. 
Tyre and Sidon is kind of northwest. It's, we would think of it as Lebanon today. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. And as you saw me uh, in the children's sermon, but he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. And he answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. May God add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and especially the living of this holy word. The title, Journey to Authenticity, uh, captures what uh, I take from this scripture reading and what I would invite you to consider with me. One of the poets of the 60s when I was growing up was Paul Simon. And Paul Simon, Simon and Garfunkel, had a song called Save the Life of My Child. And it talks about a boy that's on a ledge thinking about jumping. And it says how people are talking about this event. They are saying, oh, he, he uh, must be high on something someone said. And they discuss kind of the morality of it. They said, what's, what's become of our children today? And the refrain of this song is very simple, much like the scripture today. Save the life of my child. Save the life of my child, call, cried the desperate mother. An officer comes by and says, the force can't do a decent job. The kid's got no respect for law today, and blah, blah, as the song says. But the refrain comes again. Save the life of my child, cried the desperate mother. Very focused. Here's what this is about. It's not about are the kids on drugs or the kids uh, falling apart. It's about save the life of my child. And that's exactly uh, what was happening in the scripture. The mother, uh, so well played by Laura, uh, just is, has one focus, save the life of my child, crying the desperate mother. So I think this story uh, gives kind of the four part steps to the journey of authenticity. So the first part, which is a little uh, shocking, is that um, at first the woman is invisible to Jesus. When I did this in the children's sermon, uh, Jesus didn't notice her. So how could this happen? Well, you know, we all do this. It happens all the time. Jesus is a Jew, she is a Gentile, Jesus was male, she was a female, and on and on and on. Ethnic differences, uh, sometimes it could be language differences, but um, it was invisible. This happens in race. It's, it, we're, we are invisible. it's invisible to many of us. And he doesn't answer her at all. So that's kind of bad enough, isn't it? Um, But then when the disciples say, but Jesus, send her away. She's bugging us. And he says, I was only sent to the lost children of Israel. 
In other words, to my own people, not to Gentiles. So Jesus is aware of her. The disciples bring awareness of her to him. And this in and of itself isn't a bad thing. Anyone knows that you have to have some kind of purpose or mission or focus statement of what you can do. You can't do everything. And Jesus' starting point was with his, his family, with his country, with his religion. Uh, that's where he was starting point. That in and of itself wasn't a bad thing. But when he used that to avoid and diss this person, that was not okay. So he's aware of her, but, you know, I, I'm only going to the lost sheep of Israel. We're going up here into this land just so we can have a break after I've been fighting with the Pharisees. And then she's not going to take no for an answer, as I said. And she kind of falls in front of him. I didn't have you do that. I thought I would, if I was asked to do that, it's like, okay, then I got to get up. But uh, you may not have that problem. I would. <laughs> but he, she falls before him and says, save the life of my child. So then Jesus encounters her. It's like, he can't like avoid it anymore. He can't not be aware and it's there. But his, his Jewishness, his maleness, his ethnicity, it's still operating. It's not good to give what is holy to the dogs. So both, uh, these are some of the most haunting uh, verses in scripture for me. One is he doesn't notice, and then the other one he says this. Now, she doesn't get deterred by this at all. And she says, of course, yes, but even the dogs eat the crumbs from the master's table. It's, it's really pretty amazing. This reminds me of an interaction that happened uh, in the Senate. Uh, I know we're not supposed to talk about politics in church, and I'm not talking about politics, but there was... Do you remember the, the interaction between Senator McConnell and Senator Warren? And he was wanting her to kind of be quiet. And he said, she was warned. She was given an explanation. Nevertheless, she persisted. Well, I think if they had been around in Jesus' time, this would have applied directly to this woman. She was warned. She was given an explanation. She was warned. I'm not going to talk to you. She was given an explanation. Hey, I'm only going to the Jewish people. Uh, nevertheless, she persisted. And did she ever persist? And it's at that moment that there's a, there's a transformation. There's a transformation that happens and Jesus gets past all of those barriers that are part of his human life. So you may think, well, I thought Jesus was perfect. Well, Jesus was human. The human and the divine came together. Colossians tells us uh, he is the one in whom the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And he grew up in a time, in a setting, and he was influenced by all of that. And then these encounters affected him. And he learned from them. Now, this is why I devote my life to him and I devote my ministry to him. Because he learned from these encounters. He learned that, okay, my blindness, I need to confront that. And he learned that if I'm going to use excuses not to help a human being in need, I've got to learn from that. And when I say some outlandish things, I've got to learn from that. And he does, and he's transformed. And not only is the daughter healed, but Jesus grows through this. 
it's an amazing story. It, you know, if, if uh, a focus group was being together and there was a people saying, okay, what are we going to put in the Gospels? And it's like, well, we don't want this story in there. This doesn't make Jesus look too good. Let's take it out. But what I like about the Gospels uh, and most of Scripture is these uh, difficult in encounters are left in. So if Jesus is learning, we are invited to learn too. So I want to tell you about one learning that I had. This is 40 years ago. Um, as you heard from my bio, um, I, my full-time job has been pastoral psychotherapy, uh, spiritually oriented psychotherapy. I'm a licensed clinician uh, who does that work as an ordained minister. We work, uh, we work with anyone that, that wants to receive help. So somebody does not have to be a Christian or religious or anything uh, to, to receive help at our center. So the training program is rigorous. You know, there's the academic side, there's the personal growth side, your own therapy, and then there's, the, um, ac there's academic, clinical, and personal. So in the training program, there were four or five of us, and one of the other people in the training program's name was Amy. And Amy and I became good friends. She was an associate pastor at a local church, and we were both going through the rigors of learning how do you do psychotherapy and receive supervision, and there's group supervision, individual supervision. So we supported each other in those two or three years. At one point in that uh, process, Amy came out. Amy came out and declared that she is lesbian. And I hadn't had to deal with that before. Growing up in Eastern Kentucky, I didn't knowingly know anyone, though I'm sure there were quite a few LGBT plus folks there. Um, but I hadn't had to deal with that directly in my limited sphere. And boom, I had to deal with that. I had to deal not only with how, does, how do I understand it, how does it work with me as a minister, um, but as I would later learn the term, I needed to deal with my own homophobia. It's like, whoa, this, this doesn't fit my worldview, my consciousness. I was in a place much like uh, Jesus. And there was Amy who was patient, a good friend, a colleague, and gave me space to work on that process so that I could become an uh, open and affirming person um, in that. So that's been my experience, but you've had your own experiences. That We all are confronted with times that we have something that we've got to deal with. As an open and affirming church, you affirm all of the uh, parts of the LGBTQ plus uh, folks. But that doesn't mean everybody's there. That doesn't mean everybody's not at some part of the stage in the, in the journey. Uh, one of my best friends of 35 years is tra transgender. Um, so I had to work on that. Uh, that was 15, uh, 16 years ago. Mostly out of ignorance, but also, yeah, I carry transphobia. So there needs to be a space where there can be this kind of dialogue and encounter. It's not like, oh my gosh, you know, you're homophobic. You can, that, there's no place for that. It's about, well, tell me about where that's coming from. Let me tell you about where I'm coming from. And I would probably tell a story about Amy. Tell me about how, what informs how you're understanding these things. And we could name any kind of issue. Race is a big issue today. Uh, the divisiveness in our country is a big issue today. And there's not much dialogue going on with each other. So what allows us to be on the journey to authenticity? It's not that we've got it right. It's not that we... Uh, have the right opinions, are a member of the right party, 
uh, a member, uh, you know, uh, have the correct understandings. It, the point is that we're on a journey and we're learning together. And in Christian community, there's plenty of grace for that to happen. So you can think for a moment about what's your, what's, what, where, where are you on the journey of authenticity? On some things, you may be at the transformation stage. Give thanks to God for that. There may be others where you're at the encounter stage. It's like, wow, this is really uncomfortable, but I'm dealing with this. I've got this coworker who is whatever. Maybe it's the encounter stage. Uh, maybe you're just at the beginning of an awareness stage. It's not wrong to be at any stage. It's, it's, we all have to go through these kinds of journeys. And you are going to discover, as I do, that yes, some things are, are really invisible. Are really invisible. That's okay, as long as you're willing to allow that to come to consciousness. I'm a person, straight, white, cisgendered male. I, I'm full of privilege. The, the culture is tilted toward me. And I am learning. And I have a lot to learn, and I'll be learning until I die. Because uh, there, there are many things that are invisible to me. But are you on the journey to authenticity? That's the question. So please, please, join me on this journey. Join Jesus on this journey. He's been there. He illustrates in this difficult passage what it's like to be on that journey and to move through those four places. I ask you and invite you, please join on the journey to authenticity. We're going to, uh, uh, let's have a moment of quiet, just for you to kind of let this settle in, see where it takes you. And in just a moment, um, Emily will have the uh, hymn, Standing in the Need of Prayer. So this really kind of illustrates, you know, it's not, well, this person, they're this, or this person. No, it's me. It's not everyone else. It's not the preacher. It's not... It's me standing in the need of prayer. So just, just a few seconds of quiet, and then uh, when, this, when the song starts, I invite those who are able to please stand, and we'll sing together. It's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the name. 
It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not the stranger, not the neighbor, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not the stranger, not the neighbor, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Please be seated. So we come to the time of prayer, and it is me, it is you, standing in the need of prayer. So we want to um, support each other and pray for each other in this process. There's several... Um, um, broader prayer request that I want to keep before you from uh, the world and our our age and then you'll have the opportunity if you'd like to name a specific prayer request. So we need to uh, pray for the uh, continuing war in uh, Israel uh, and Gaza. Um, that's uh, ongoing and pray for peace in that land. The war or conflict between Russia and Ukraine continues. We need to pray for all involved there. I would ask for continued prayers for uh, our own nation. Um, in my 69 years, the divisiveness is quite amazing and quite stronger than it ever has been. And I, I would ask for prayers for our, our own country so that we can have uh, conversations and, and civility in our process of being a community of people. Um, I think we should pray, as Paul says in Romans, pray for uh, government officials, pray for not only uh, president and leaders, but also um, everyone who's involved in governing. And then I would ask you to pray for yourselves and for each other on what are the issues that were, you may be invisible, or maybe it's moved to the next stage of awareness, but what, what issues are you, um, what may, may be invisible, asking God to open your eyes uh, as Jesus' eyes were open. So those are uh, several items that I think are important to name in prayer. Um, and I also would like to give uh, the congregation that, that's here, as well as those online, if there are any specific uh, prayer requests at this time. And if, if there is, raise your hand so Laura can bring the microphone to you. Laura? Oh, okay. Don't, don't scratch your face. This is like an auction, you know, you just bought something. <laughs> okay. So uh, in the pastoral prayer, um, when you hear the phrase, God of love, you're invited to say what? Hear our prayer. And at the end of the prayer, uh, at the right time, uh, we will join together in the Lord's Prayer. So let us be God's people at prayer. Oh God, we thank you for the testimony of Scripture that uh, challenges us and inspires us. That is uh, sometimes hard to understand and is often uh, a real inspiration to our own walk with you and with each other. Help each of us take these words to heart. 
We know that you do not call us to perfection because we're all on a journey. We're all imperfect. And we know that as Psalm 15 said, we can ascend your holy hill and we can be in your dwelling. And yes, you invite us to be blameless and not speak ill of folks. But when we do, as we did earlier, we can confess that to you and sometimes to the other person. Oh God, we have many prayer concerns on our heart. We pray for uh, the people of Israel and Palestine and the war that is raging there. We pray for the people of Ukraine and Russia. We pray for our own country, all leaders. We pray for an ability to listen and an increase of civility. We ask you that as you bring uh, issues to each of us individually or possibly as a church, that you would give us the courage to encounter those, that we could follow the model of Jesus who, as was confronted, could really engage and even learn from these experiences. God of love, in our own church, we pray for any who may be of need, who may need healing, body, mind, or spirit. God of love, in the process of the, this church discerning uh, who will be the next pastor, we pray for your guidance and your wisdom and the Holy Spirit's action as those processes are going on. God of love. Thank you for each person that is here today. Thank you for the opportunity to gather. Thank you for um, all who participated in the service. Bill and Laura, Emily, Abby, and the congregation, and myself. Thank you for that opportunity. God of love. And now, God, we take just a few moments of silence to offer our personal prayers to you in the sacredness of our own hearts. Oh God, we offer up our prayers to you in the name of Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hopefully you have received so far by being together, by singing, by praying, by hearing uh, the word of, of Christ. And now you have an opportunity to give back. So you are invited to give uh, an offering as in whatever way you would like to do that. And I remind you that when Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, um, let your light so shine before all people that they may see your good works and give glory to God who is in heaven. In whatever way you give, God will bless that. 
Uh, the morning offering will now be given and received. Join me together uh, in the prayer of dedication of the offerings that we've given. O oh God, most merciful and gracious, of whose bounty we have all received, accept, we pray, this offering of your people. Remember in your love those who have brought it, those for whom it is given. And so follow it with your blessing that it may promote peace and goodwill among all people and advance the realm of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our final hymn will be, Won't You Let Me Be Your Servant? And with those all who are able, please stand. Won't you let me be your servant? Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. We are pilgrims on a journey. We are travelers on the road. We are here to help each other go the and bear the load. I will hold the Christ light for you in the shadow of your fear. I will hold my hand out to you, speak the peace you long to hear. When we sing to God in heaven, we shall find such harmony born of all we've known together of christ's love and agony well how wonderful to be together to celebrate our faith together be here in Christ's name. 
And I hope that you will undertake the journey of authenticity. And whether that be invisibility, awareness, uh, encounter, or transformation, that wherever you are on the journey on any issue, that you will engage it with courage and strength. And may you go forth from this place today, a light of Christ into your community. Amen. Amen. Thank Worship Reader today, Bill Dunn and Laura Dunn for helping out with children's story, graphic design and production by Emily, guest minister, Reverend Dr. David Reynolds. Thank you very much. Uh, this week we have meditation on Tuesday at 5 p.m., Bible study Wednesday at 10, and next Sunday worship will be in person and uh, here also online and it will be a blessing of the animals we have a little more announcement about that later but we'll roll into our next announcement from the pastoral search committee I think I just closed. The great news is that the Church Council has approved the financial conditions for extending a call to our pastor candidate. The search committee has extended that call and the candidate has accepted. The candidate will be at CCNB on Sunday, December 3rd to give a candidating sermon. At the end of the service, the candidate will step out while we hold a congregational meeting to vote on approving the call. Spread the word to be in church on December 3rd. Meanwhile, remember to pledge early and pledge big. Thank you very much. So that's a wonderful announcement. Ralph asked me to record. Um, and share with you at the start of announcements. So, December 3rd, put it on your calendar, be ready, we'll have a meeting after. And my guess is we will hold you right here for the meeting before you even go to refreshments so that we can be meeting and then going on. So, uh, next Sunday happens to be uh, Rural Life Sunday and Blessing of the Animals. Uh, and uh, Jeff Scott will lead that, and all is welcome from the public, even your two-legged, four-legged, however many-legged. I know some people, cats maybe have lost a leg, so maybe they have three legs. <laughs> all animals uh, and people are invited to join. There are flyers about it, and somebody else may also announce about it. And then the Pumpkin and Pine Fair announcements. Set up starts today after church. Transporting items from the LaGrosse house to the church will happen on October 23rd at 10 a.m. Meet at the LaGrosse. Unpacking and arranging of all the fair items will happen October 24 through 29. So that week after we transport it here on the 23rd, we're gonna start doing that every day at 10. Pricing will be October 30, November 1, 2, and 3, from the hours of 10 to 2. Please contact Barb Legro right here in front of me with any questions. There's her phone number, 848-0058. And uh, don't forget that we're also only running it from 9 to 1 this year. We usually do 9 to 2, but we're a little less energy. Um, and I think we sell... Most of the stuff I will buy one anyhow, so, um, especially the bakers. Um, and uh, so, invite all your friends, and Barb's going to tell us a little bit more about how you can help. I think there's still sign-up sheets up there. She'll tell you what she needs. Um, oh, one other announcement for me is that um, we have our church directory, and we're trying to update that. So, I have a copy of it up at the refreshments table. If you just look over, find where you are, and just make sure all the information is correct for you. I'd really appreciate that. 
Thank you, Emily. Yeah. Um, just to go on about what um, Ralph said about stewardship, um, pledge often and pledge deep, I think is what he said. <laughs> um, I, I just want to let everyone know that they can place their pledge cards in the um, offering. Thank you. And um, or mail them back to me or hand them to me, whatever you want. I do need them all in by November 1st at the latest. So if you can do that, we have had some come in already, which is great. Um, the other thing is that um, the Pumpkin and Pine Fair. For those of you who have offered to make pies and stuff for me, I've got little pie plates. I've got big pie plates. I've got cookie bags. I've got pie boxes. And if you're making muffins at all or anything similar to that, I've also got smaller boxes for those as well. So feel free to come up and take what you need. And I appreciate everybody who volunteered to do, do that. Um, let me think if there's anything else. As far as the schedule goes, I do have copies of the schedule here um, if you want to grab one. And yeah, time is of the essence. What we're going to do today is just take out all the stuff from downstairs. It's not all going to be laid out because, of course, we have the service next, next week. But I would like to get the back pews done and some up on the side a little bit just so we could start taking stuff from my house and decide where everything's going to go and see how much stuff that we do have. And then next Sunday after church, we will definitely um, set up everything else that we've got. We'll have a better idea, I think, by then as to what's going on. So, um, and if you want to drop things off, you can leave them in the back pews um, where it's available and, um, and we'll go through them. We will be here, like she said, at 10 in the morning. So if people want to drop things off then, or if you still want it, if you can't make it up to the church, you can always still drop it off in my house. Okay. Anyone else have announcements? Charlie? Thank you, Barbara, for all your work. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, y'all. Um, just a, a reminder, if you can't bring your pet or or even an animal without legs, whether it be a frog, uh, excuse me, a snake, or what else. <laughs> Please, uh, you can bring a picture, too. Fish, yeah. You can bring a picture, and we'll bless that picture. And I'd really like to offer uh, those folks that come forward, too, to say what their favorite thing about their pet or creature is. Just a little bit of time of sharing. We'll have some lively music, and it'll be a good time. So please feel encouraged. I just want to remind you again, thank you for all that brought a lovely display of refreshments. We have one more week without Amy, so please keep it up for another week. Uh, we appreciate it very much. Also, along with that, even though Jeff said he was part of the doggy treats, if you could bring some doggy treats, if you bring your doggy, or your kitty, or your fish, or snake. <laughs> Okay, in uh, thinking of these, all these pets coming to church, or home they are, um, I have brought some doggy pickup bags. <laughs> You're more than welcome to take one, two, five, how many? I've got a big dog or a little dog, and i got a little cookie roll dog. <laughs> so, but I've got them up at the, um, they're, they're pink, so I hope some of the uh, male dogs won't be offended. <laughs> <laughs> but I figured maybe it'll see, save, you know, some piles of more. Or in the church. Who knows? <laughs> what? What is this muttering? Ooh, you. Okay, so I think we're ready to enjoy the refreshments. 